Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are excited to introduce you to Ablizna, a treatment for adult patients with NMOSC who are anti aquaporin 4 antibody positive. We will get started in just a few minutes. We wanted to thank the Guppy Jackson Charitable Foundation for partnering with Rural Bio to share information about this new treatment option for NMOSC. Please note, tonight's webinar will be recorded. To start, I would like to introduce Cheryl Lapidus, Head of Patient Engagement at Viola Bio. Cheryl, please unmute your microphone and turn on your video now. All right, hello everyone. I'm playing with my camera, unfortunately. I. There we are. Sorry about that. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for taking uh, time this evening to spend with us as we share information on Eplizna with you. Uh, we're going to hear from a few people this evening. Following myself, you'll hear from Dr. Maureen Neely, who will provide an overview of NMO SD. Following Dr. Neely, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Bennett will review Eplizna and the N-Momentum study overview and the important safety information. Following Dr. Bennett, we'll hear from Sally. Sally is a, a patient um, who has experience on Uplisna. And then we'll hear from Denise Butler, Director of Patient Support Services, uh, who'll share uh, information about the Viola VIP program. Thank you. Next slide, please. So a little bit about Viola Bio. Our mission at Viella Bio is to improve the lives of those impacted by serious, underserved, inflammatory, and autoimmune diseases. We lead with scientific innovation and are firm believers in cultivating an environment that fosters creativity and collaboration. Next slide, please. Our philosophy is multifold, to improve access to innovative medicines and focus on underserved patient populations while promoting a culture of science and giving back to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. You will now hear from Maureen Neely, Medical Affairs at Vela Bio. Maureen, please unmute your microphone and turn on your video now. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you to uh, Guthy Jackson Foundation for being with us tonight. I'm just going to give you a very brief overview of NMO uh, SD. Can you please advance the slide? So as you all well know, neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder is an autoimmune disease of the central nervous system that preferentially targets the optic nerves and the spinal cord and can cause uh, problems with vision and as well as mobility in, in and also pain and bowel and bladder dysfunction, to name just some of the symptoms that are most commonly seen with this disease. It is a relapsing disease such that disability accrues with each relapse. And so one of the goals for treatment really is to reduce the risk of relapses. So and enable to then stop the, uh, to reduce the risk of accruing disability over time. We do know from descriptive studies that there's quite a, a, a um, significant impact on daily life in this patient population. Next slide, please. So the demographics of NMOSD uh, continue to evolve as the diagnostic criteria evolve and as practitioners are more able and quicker to recognize uh, NMOSD in their patients. But what we do know is at least 15,000 people in the U.S. are likely to be affected with this, and that it disproportionately targets women. Uh, in those who are positive for the aquaporin-4 antibody, nine women are affected for every one man, uh, and the prevalence is higher in those of African and Asian descent. The median age of onset is 40 years, right in the prime of these women's lives. But the range is quite broad, such that people can present with their first symptom at a very young age, as well as older, uh, later in their life. In the most sensitive of assays that are available, about 80% of patients 
are positive for the aquaporin-4 antibody, which is, uh, the, so aquaporin-4 is a protein that's found in us and helps with the transmission of, or the conduction of water across cell membranes. And for a uh, not well elucidated reason, these patients develop antibodies to this protein. Next slide. Thank you so much, Maureen. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jeffrey Bennett. Dr. Bennett, you may now unmute your microphone and turn on your video. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me as I review some of the clinical trial results, mechanism of action, prescription information, and safety for Ablizna. Ablizna is an FDA-approved medication for the treatment of aquaporin-4 autoantibody seropositive neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder, or NMOSD. As noted in the Kaplan-Meier plot of relapse risk on the left side of this slide, Ablizna reduced the risk of NMOSD relapse by almost 78%. The top line represents the relapses occurring in the aplisna-treated population, and the lower line represents the placebo-treated population. Almost 90% of NMOSD patients treated with aplisna were relapse-free at 28 weeks versus 58% of patients treated with placebo. Hospitalizations related to NMOSD disease activity were also reduced almost fourfold. Uplisna works by depleting B lymphocytes, thereby modulating the immune response. The exact mechanism by which B cell depletion exerts its beneficial effects in NMOSD is unknown, but may involve modulation of aquaporin-4 autoantibody production, inflammatory messenger secretion, and reducing immune cell activation. Despite its beneficial effects on the autoimmune response in NMOSD, a Blizna treatment did not increase the risk for infection. Side effects or serious adverse events were not more frequent in a Blizna treated patients versus those treated with placebo. The most common reported adverse events in the clinical trial included urinary tract infection, joint pain, headache and back pain, infusion-related reactions were infrequent and occurred in less than 10% of patients. The Aplisna NMO and Momentum trial was the largest randomized double-blind placebo-controlled clinical study in NMOSD and enrolled almost 230 NMOSD patients in over 25 countries. Aplisna was studied in both aquaporin-4 IgG seropositive and seronegative patients as monotherapy. That is, it was studied without the addition of other immunosuppressive medications. Aplisna is a therapeutic monoclonal antibody that is infused intravenously over the course of 90 minutes. The initial treatment is comprised of two doses of 300 milligrams administered two weeks apart. Subsequent doses of 300 milligrams are administered once every six months thereafter. Whether you are recently diagnosed with NMOSD, have established NMOSD and suffered a recent attack, or have been relapse-free on older, unproven immunosuppressive therapies, it is prudent to have a conversation with your doctor about whether aplisna can benefit the care of your NMOSD. Your current treating physician will be able to review other important issues about aplisna treatment and the overall care of your NMOSD. Some important issues to always bring up to your physician are noted on the right-hand side of this slide. To review 
Aplizna is a novel monoclonal antibody therapy approved for the treatment of aquaporin-4 seropositive NMOSD. Patients with active hepatitis and active or untreated inactive tuberculosis should not receive aplizna. Your doctor will test you for hepatitis B and TB prior to initiating treatment. Before treatment, patients should receive any required vaccinations, and if pregnancy is possible, use some form of active birth control. It is currently unknown whether aplizna can harm a developing baby, and aplizma may pass into the breast milk. Therefore, any infusion scheduled in breastfeeding mothers should be scheduled appropriately to avoid any unwanted transfer. During a PLISNA treatment, patients should engage with their prescribing physician and inform them of any adverse events or changes in medication while on therapy. Yearly, patients will be tested to ensure that they have not been infected with hepatitis B or experienced hepatitis B viral activation. Rare infections, such as progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, a reactivation of a latent viral infection with JC virus, may occur with aplizna. While PML has not been reported to date with this medication, PML has been infrequently reported in patients treated with other B cell depleting therapies. Symptoms of PML include weakness, confusion, loss of coordination, or changes in personality, and might be confused with an NMOSD attack. As a reminder, aplizna is delivered intravenously in concert with additional medications to minimize infusion related reactions. The first dose is given as two infusions two weeks apart, and then subsequent infusions are delivered once every six months. Possible side effects include infusion-related reactions, urinary tract infection, headache, and joint pains. Periodic blood tests, such as blood lymphocyte counts, will be routinely assessed in order to monitor for safety and potentially therapeutic efficacy. Thank you again for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Bennett. As a note, the full important safety information and prescribing information for Aplizna is available for download in the file section on the bottom right of your screen. To download, please click the document name. Next, please join me in welcoming Sally, an individual living with NMOSD who is here to share her experience with Aplizna. Sally, please your unmute microphone. your microphone turn on your, turn on your video now. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're all good. You're all good. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Uh, so thank you for having me here to share my story with um, Aplizna. Uh, in 2016, I started to get a strange pain in my right arm and hand that felt like a combination of numbness and shooting pain. My first thought was that I had a pinched nerve, so I made an appointment with my regular physician to try and figure out what was wrong. Following an MRI, ER doctors determined that I had suffered from a stroke. This surprised me uh, because I was otherwise healthy and active and was regularly exercising. After the stroke diagnosis, I met with a neurologist and requested a full MRI to also include the cervical spine. This MRI showed lesions on my cervical spine and I was then diagnosed with MS. As the numbness continued to worsen, the neurologist referred me to a specialist to determine the specific type of MS and potential treatment options. The neurologist confirmed that the lesions were still leaky and the disease was active. I was treated with oral prednisone until I could put up, be put on IV steroids. But while I was awaiting for the approval of the IV steroids, the vomiting began and continued for 24 hours. And I was unsure of the cause of that as well. I later learned that this is one of the symptoms of NMLSD. I was treated with IV steroids, which slowed down the numbness, but the pain continued. My neurologist decided to do a spinal tap and a blood test 
which showed the presence of aquaporin-4 antibodies. I was then finally diagnosed with NMOSD. I learned that NMOSD can manifest itself in many different ways, and because of this, it's often very hard to diagnose. The numbness and shooting pain I was dealing with was due to inflammation of the spinal cord. My neurologist explained to me that NMOSD can also cause inflammation of the optic nerve, which can cause eye and vision problems and pain um, in the eyes. Luckily, I never experienced any of these symptoms. It took about three months from my initial symptoms to my diagnosis of NMOSD. I know firsthand that because of the variety of symptoms, the disease can be difficult to diagnose and there's often many initial diagnoses. Once I received the NMOSD diagnosis at an NMO Center of Excellence, my neurologist told me about the different treatment options available for patients living with NMO. While there was no approved drug at the time, I was enrolled in a clinical study now known as Uplisna. My physician explained that Uplisna is designed for patients with NMOSD and is designed to deplete the B cells that are making the antibodies which lead to the disease. After learning more about the drug, it felt like the right drug for me and that would it would fit well into my lifestyle. When I first started treatment, I was meeting with doctors about once a month for routine tests to see how I was responding. After using up Lisna for several years, I get an infusion now only every six months. I also have routine blood work every three months and all of this fits well into my routine. Before beginning the Uplisna injection, I first receive a steroid medication and an histamine and a fever prevention to help avoid infusion reactions. The whole process takes about four hours and is followed by an hour of observation. My care team also gives me an examination to check in and ensure that I'm healthy. Although everyone responds differently to treatment, after treatment, I have a full appetite, normal energy level, and I'm able to drive myself home. To date, I haven't experienced any side effects from the treatment. This is my experience only, and as always, patients should discuss what is right with their doctor. Since using a Blizna, I haven't had any additional attacks. While I take certain precautions, knowing I have a suppressed immune system, I've been able to continue to do things I enjoy, such as continue work as a second grade teacher, spend time with my family, and enjoy being outside. Personally, I feel less anxious about traveling when I could, being away from home, and doing things that I love because I have fewer attacks with NMOSD. Because I have nerve damage in my hand and arm, I still have some numbness but overall, my symptoms are under control. The fear of having an NMOSD attack no longer guides my decision making. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Sally. As a, note, As a note, we will not be taking questions during this webinar, but we will let you know how you can submit your questions once the webinar is over. Next, I would like to welcome Denise Butler, Director of Patient Support at VAO Bio. Denise, don't forget to unmute your microphone and turn on your video now. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Heather, for that. Um, again, as everyone has mentioned before, thank you so much for joining um, this call this evening. Um, we definitely appreciate the time and the engagement and just want to um, make sure that we are providing you with the information that you need um, to start any conversations that you may need to have and just to answer some additional questions um, in reference to Ablizna and the services in which we offer. So again, my name is Denise Butler. I'm the Director of Patient Support Services here at Viela Bio. Um, and my role and responsibility is to design and develop the patient support program that we have branded Viela VIP. Next slide, please. So I wanted to provide you a little bit more information about um, Uplisna and the Viela VIP program. So now that Uplisna is FDA approved for commercial use, 
we launched um, on June the 10th a support program designed with you, your caregivers, and your healthcare providers and prescribers in mind. This is a complimentary program. It does not cost you, your healthcare provider, or a caregiver anything to enroll. The purpose of this program is to be the central nucleus for you all and to provide you all with resources and support along your treatment journey. We do have personal case managers on the reimbursement side, as well as a nursing service case manager that are able to help you every step of the way from a decision to treat with Uplisna all the way through product fulfillment, administration, and everything in between. We also have financial services, assistance services that are available should you need help. Um, we understand, especially in the world in which we live in with COVID, these are very trying times. We do not want um, any patient's inability to pay to be the reason why they are not able to access Uplisna. In addition to um, the financial services, we have the commercial copay program um, that is eligible for our patients that have private commercial insurance, but we also have additional options for patients that are federally insured. So if a patient, if you have Medicare or Medicaid, um, we also have programs and referrals that we can provide to you to provide um, additional financial services and assistance in those realms. In addition to financial assistance, we also have created educational resource materials and also have the ability to refer you to our industry partners um, to provide you additional information in reference to NMOSD, treatments available, and questions that you may have. So where do you get this information? I'm glad you asked. Um, we have a branded website for the Biela VIP program. It is www.bielavip.com. On that website, there are many resources and tools available for you to peruse through, as well as for um, your caregivers and healthcare providers to access. The very first form um, or access piece that's available on the Viela VIP's website is the patient referral form. That is the very first step in enrolling into the Viela VIP's program to access the services and support that we are offering. Um, that form has to be filled out by you, the patient, as well as your prescribing physician once he or she has made the decision to treat you with Uplisna. There's also many other resources that are available that we have created to help and to provide you all additional information. Um, there's a billing and coding guide that would be beneficial to your healthcare provider. Um, we have a tip sheet, which is extremely important when um, you all are filling out this form for the first time. We want that form, that tip sheet to be a step-by-step. -step. It gives you all the information in which you need, what steps and what sections need to be filled out, who needs to fill out this portion for your doctor and then the portion in which you would be responsible to sign into a test. There's also a Viela VIP brochure out there. Um, on that brochure, there's additional information about all of the many service offerings that we have through Viela VIP. Again, all designed in mind with you, your caregivers and your prescribers. So we appreciate again, your time. Uh, the Viela VIPs program is again now open and able to assist and answer questions. They are available Monday through Friday, nine, excuse me, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you have questions about the program or are interested in receiving some additional information, simply call 833-842-8473. That is 833-VIB-VIP. Thank you so much for your time again and for your engagement and we appreciate you. Thank you so much, Denise. That concludes today's webinar. On behalf of Viela Bio, we would like to say thank you for your time today. A special thanks to the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation for allowing us to share this information about Aplisma with your members. If you have questions about any of the information from today's webinar, please email vialaquestions at spectrumscience.com or contact your physician. 
As a note, De La Bio is not able to answer specific questions about your own condition, but we encourage you to reach out for, to your physician to learn more. Thank you and have a wonderful evening.